It's my favorite stuff. I love being. I love playing a rock and roll band. I love also writing extremely sad acoustic songs because it makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> no, it's just it's cathartic, you know. If you if you hold all that shit inside, it just eats away at you. But when you put it into a song, you can just kind of let it go a little bit quicker. And at least that's how it works for me. I don't think everybody does that. I don't think everybody just sits around writing songs about depressing shit. At least not people that are trying to sell me. <laughs> <laughs> you're selling songs, they need to be fucking happy. They need about rainbows and unicorns and country radio is about all the all the good things about being a southern, you know. It's, it's about like cold beer, Friday night, I worked hard, cut a loose, pretty girls, pickup trucks. <laughs> they don't write about that fucked up shit. The, the stuff we keep in the corners, the stuff we don't talk about at, at holidays and get togethers, it's the elephants in the room. That's the shit that I like writing about. Oh, yeah. Life. Yeah. I like honesty. I, I, I like, I don't get me wrong. I like, I like all that fun shit too. But that's not what country music is. Country music's about the, the tough shit. There's enough songs about trucks and girls and how much fun it is and to drink cold beer and naming the cold beer that you're drinking and naming the truck that you're driving. As much fun as that is, as much. Must be really hard because it takes seven or eight motherfuckers to write one of those songs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I can't sit down and do it because it takes so many fuckers to write one of those things. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to writing sad songs by myself in a room. <laughs> don't don't call me. That's it. I, I, I thoroughly fucking enjoy it. It's it's one of my favorite pastimes. It's not like super. I'm not sitting there like by myself staring like oh. Woe is me. I'm like, oh, I like writing depressing songs. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, all my favorite writers, that's what they do. All my favorite writers don't write happy shit. You know, they write depressing, sad shit about life and reality. And I think that's what you're supposed to do. Some of the prettiest things can be found in the dark in the corner. Hell yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the reason I write songs is that I love exploring those fucking corners. I love going to those dark corners and just digging around and seeing what I can find. A lot of times you don't want to know what's you don't want to know what's fucking over there. You learn a lot about yourself writing shitty songs about shitty things in your life, you know. But I'm gonna. Uh, I was talking about how good that, that new band is. Uh, I, I, I'm having a blast. We've been out on the road. With, I've had this band for about a year now, and they are they are fun. They have made me fall back in love with playing music live and touring. And uh, yeah. <laughs> For those of you that are undoctrinated with the American Aquarium, I've been doing this shit for 12 years. Um, I've had 36 band members in 12 years. Uh, again, uh, at a certain point in your life, you have to take stock and, and realize that maybe you're the fucking problem. <laughs> After 36 people that you care about walk away from you. There's no blaming that on anybody else. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's me, apparently I am hard to work with. <laughs> Are you in that corner right now? I'm in that fucking corner right now, man. Y'all are exploring it with me. I got a fucking flashlight and I'm leading the way. Y'all are safe. Y'all are behind me. Y'all are just peering into the fucking corner and being like, holy shit, he's going there. And I'm looking back and saying, yeah, follow me here. Let's get fucking depressing. Because nothing says happy Sunday night like crying. Alone. But uh, yeah, I, I wrote this song for the guys. Uh, I was really lucky. I was able to keep a, a band together for eight years. Uh, I, I was able to keep the same band together for eight years. And we made two records together. We made Burn, Flicker, Die, and Wolves together. And uh, a, a lot of people will consider that the definitive version of this band. That's where a lot of people found our band was with that band. And uh, they decided to come up with me in February of 2017 and let me know that they did not want to play music with me. Anymore. Uh, and that's a, that's a heavy fucking pill to swallow when uh, because I was used to replacing one member at a time, but I never had the, uh, the mass exodus. So uh, I took a couple weeks uh, to get my priorities in line and realize that, that I'm not done. Uh, I'm not done till I say I'm done. And there's not a piece of quit in me. And uh, so I, I kept it going. I put a new band together and uh, we picked right back up where the other band left off. Uh, we went to the studio in December and made arguably what's the most uh, powerful record this band's ever made. And uh, commercially and critically. Um, I don't know where everybody personally sits. I know everybody's got opinions, just like assholes. But I like this new record, but I'm an egotistical artist and I think everything new is better than anything that came before it. All that
that other shit was just garbage that led to the current brilliance that stands before you. I think that's how every artist looks at songs or whatever art you create. It's a funny intersection. What we have to be as artists, you have to be egotistical maniacs. You also have to be insecure children. And art is somewhere right in the middle of that. Because you have to be insecure enough to talk about the shit that nobody wants to talk about. But you also have to be cocky enough to sell the shit about the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. So it's, it's a funny, funny piece of where ego and, 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 and insecurity meet. And that, that's, where, that's where my art comes from, at least. And uh, I wrote this song for the band that walked away from it. And uh, I hope they're all doing well. I, hope, I wish nothing but the best for them. Um, like any relationship, it ran its course. We started at the same root, the tree grew, and the branches spread out. And if you keep your eye off them branches long enough, you realize they grow pretty far away from each other. And by the end of the eight years we were together, we grew pretty far apart. Uh, but this is for me. I still hear the silence echo across the hardwood floor. Screaming as you cut across the room to that front door. Nothing lasts forever, but I'd have sworn you'd stay. Ain't it funny how the good things in life seem to fade away? We were carrying a heavy load until one of us got tired of lifting. We were driving down the dead end road In a car too far gone for fixing And I still think about that summer And I still hear the sounds Petty on the radio I won't back down I called you my brother But you were closer than my kin it kills me knowing you may never pass my way again But I hope every now and then You look back fondly on the days when we were younger men We packed up that 350 for the car line With hopes and dreams And other childish things Men learn to leave behind We spent a decade doing circles Not knowing what's in store Each new town more magical Than the town before But we lost track of time and the dark hair of our youth started to whiten I watched my father's face become mine And the cruel hands of truth started to tighten I still think about that summer So long ago it seems Petty on the radio was running down the dream I called you my brother, but you were closer than my kin. And it kills me knowing you may never pass my way again. But I hope that every now and then you look back fondly on the days when we were younger men. I remember back before that pendulum had swung Back before we said the things that couldn't be undone I remember back when we were wild and we were young Yeah, I still think about that summer and how it passed us by Petty on the radio, us learning how to fly. I called you my brother, but you were closer than my kin. And it kills me knowing you may never pass my way again. 
But I hope that every now and then you look back fondly on the days when we were young.